Would you agree with the assessment from IATA Director General yesterday that the industry is facing significant downside risks, not only passenger but cargo because of the trade war, uh, rising fuel costs, and as a side issue, which is, seems like there's no end in sight, to the MAX. You don't fly the MAX, so we'll just put that out there. But there are three main issues that we're dealing with, high fuel, trade war, MAX. Yeah. Well, clearly, uh, we, we see, of course, the same trends. Uh, when we released our first quarter earnings, we saw some uh, results down because of higher fuel prices. Uh, and clearly, the, the trade war, or the disputes at least, uh, are creating downward pressure on, uh, on mostly cargo and, uh, um, and affecting our results. Yeah. So going forward, though, with the operating expenses, if this is a prolonged trade war, do you see this affecting global travel and especially cargo? Well, again, cargo, we already see it. Passenger side, we don't see it yet. Um, I find it very difficult to predict it. Uh, there's probably news every day uh, when it comes to new trade uh, disputes. I think what is important is that many of the underlying economic factors are still pretty robust. Uh, yeah. And w with that, uh, the passenger demand is, is, is still there. Now, we know that KLM and Air France... Uh Air France came in in 2003, bought KLM. You are run independently, though, right? And, and does the synergies that you have there in challenging times work? You really worked at cutting costs at KLM, while Air France has its issues with labor strife and, and profitability issues. Well, Air France KLM was created back in 2004. We have done really a lot already. All our commercial teams are integrated. We have one revenue management organization. All the network planning is coordinated. A lot of the purchasing is being done together. So the image of completely independent is just not true. What we do, though, is we put emphasis on, this, on separate brands. Our, our brand, our people, our Dutch heritage, is our, is, our, is our image towards customers. That's very important. Next to that, indeed, indeed at KLM, we have done some serious restructuring in the last few years, uh, and we've seen that back in, in good results. Now, the single aisle market right now in focus because of the max grounding. You don't have the max, but you do have dash 700s, 800s, and 900s. And it's been long delayed or rumored that you are looking at new generation yeah. of single aisle airplane. W when is that decision going to be made, and does the max issue delay that decision even further. Well, clearly, uh, indeed, we are having at KLM Group, we have around 90 737s in operation, a mixture of uh, the 700, 800, and 900. We didn't take any decision yet on the new aircraft uh, going forward, uh, and clearly we, we, we wait at this point in time uh, and see what's, uh, what's happening. Does it push up the soon-to-be-launched, we're hearing in Paris, the Airbus A321 XLR? Is that one you have to really seriously look at? Well, again, we have a basis of 90 737s at KLM. Uh, we're pretty, a pretty robust operator. We're happy with the operation. I think the, the, max, uh, the max crisis, if you wish, uh, uh, we just have to wait the outcome. And I, I know that Boeing is working hard on it together with the regulators, and we wait for that. we got to talk about the Flying V. You signed yeah. on the sidelines of IATA a development, and you, you pledged some money as well to the development of this blended wing concept plane. Tell me why this would have a chance when, like, the Sonic Cruiser was scrapped. I mean, that was subsonic, so it was a little yeah. different. But what advantages would this blended wing flying V have? You know, what, what is important for us at KLM is we put sustainability very high on our agenda. I think it's one of the key topics here also at the IATA. So we really want to demonstrate our commitment and our involvement in that. We have invested in a biofuel factory, and we would like to work together with, with different parties. Well, this is a project done by a Dutch university, one of the most renowned universities in the world, who is really doing research on that. What we are, in fact, doing today is reaching out engaging with our partners, supporting it financially to work it out. We will not build aircraft, neither will the university yeah. will. And I think it's good that we demonstrate to all our stakeholders, hey, we take this issue serious and we're working on that. So it's just a concept. I mean, how realistic, though, could it be? Because, again, as I said, Boeing for years looked at the Sonic Cruiser and decided, listen, people want efficiency more yeah. than they want speed. Well, it, it, it is a concept. What they're going to build now is a model to, to test it and to work on it. We are participating in that. Again, when it would come to a real design, it has to be done by the, by the manufacturers, not, not by a university, not, neither by us. But again, what I, what I would like to do, in fact, is to reach out to all the parties and say, hey, this is an industry problem. How do we work together on this? And how do we make sure that the topic of sustainability, which is increasingly important, and to my view, a license to grow or to operate for the industry, how do we engage with other parties and work together? Best case scenario, when does a flying V hit the airway? 2050. 
Okay, and how much are you investing right now? We're not disclosing that you're amount. Not disclosing. Okay, but you're obviously interested in the sustainability as well as the biofuels. Space. Yeah, no, in the biofuels we are investing heavily actually, and yeah. we decided now to, to participate in the creation of the first biofuel plant that's going to be built in the Netherlands, and it's really helping us to, to make a, a leap step forward in terms of biofuel.